good evening one and all and as we have seen that we have requested time and again just as neil thomas to share his knowledge and his passion to share the knowledge is so deep rooted that he will say that the topics which he has done in the judicial academy or in different colleges he would like to take something different therefore uh, on a lot of discussions we thought that there's always a debate as to whether the legal heirs legal representatives or nominees continue to remain the same or there is a subtle difference between them because we had been re repeatedly been re having requests that kindly share the knowledge on this aspect and we thought that it was be justice sunil thomas who could be the best person to share his knowledge amongst us i was just seeing that mr premraj was also there uh, samo is not there uh, no he is he is logged in i will ask mr prem to just give his introduction being from the same place he knows that justice sunil thomas is epitome of knowledge over to you prem good evening sir and good evening all actually i am caught off the guard i just wanted to hear this priceless lecture which Thank gives you so much. very very interesting topic and at the primary blush it would appear it is a very small insignificant topic but it is on the other way around well first dealing with the topic i would say that not merely the layman even the lawyers and judges seem to get confused and seem to entertain a feel that the terms legal heirs and legal representative they are interchangeable now as justice sunil thomas may point the kerala high court i think it's a month back somewhere in the last week of january 2023 an official memorandum was issued and uh, it, the subject was the implementation of a uniform procedure in implementing the legal heirs of the deceased parties in the litigation implementing the legal heirs that is the subject i have seen it i don't have it right now and in cpc we have the rules in rule 22 which extensively deal with the implementation of legal representatives either of a deceased plaintiff or a deceased defendant rules 3 and 4 of rule 22 to be very precise now is rule 4a of course deals with the situation when there are no legal representatives and we have rule 5 what we find that this is a rule which is fully dedicated to the determination as to whether any person is or not the legal representative either of a deceased plaintiff or a deceased defendant and this rule interestingly contains a proviso which is added during the 1976 amendment that if such a question arises before an appeal court then that court before determining the question can direct any subordinate court to try the question and to return the reports to get the evidence what what is recorded at such trial and the findings and reasons thereof and the appeal court can take the same into consideration so we can see the cpc deals with legal representatives and this is the particular term which you see defined in section 2 comes 11 which means that a person who in law represents the estate of a deceased person and the court it includes any person who can intermeddle with the estate Correct. and of course i should have mentioned one more rule in 22 which deals with the situation when some party dies during the process of hearing and the pronouncement of judgment a very confusing situation the solution of which we find in rule 6 and uh, of course as the supreme court has said long i think it is 1965 dayaram versus shyam sundari i think it is 1965 judgment of the three judge bench which held that uh, in period of legal representatives they sufficiently represent the estate of the deceased and the decision obtained with them on the record it will bind not merely those implicated but the entire estate including those who are not brought on the record and any person implicated merely for the purpose of that suit and all and on the occasion to go through a judgment of the punjab and haryana high court mohinder kaur's judgment it's ar in 81 punjab and haryana at page 130 which are beautifully which has distinguished this thing that of course was a case concerned about article 21 rule 5 and it held that the legal representative is appointed for a ordinary contract of issue and such a decision it cannot take away for all the times to come the rights of the rightful heir of the deceased in all matters and the concept of a legal representative mm. and a of a deceased party they are extremely and entirely different so as to constitute one as an illa 
it is unnecessary that he should have a beneficial interest in the ST. Just like we see the executors and the administrators. Uh, they are all legal representatives and they may have no beneficial interest. And of course, if it's a trust person, for so trust person is the property of a deceased who claims title himself independently of that of the deceased, he can be a legal representative. On the other hand, the heirs on whom the beneficial interest belong under the law, whether statutory or otherwise, the one in the property is the statute, they will be the legal representatives. And of course, there are other decisions like uh, Janani versus Satyasai, Senator Trust and others, which uh, Justice Sonia Thomas would be dealing in detail. And uh, of course, as to whom is the nominee, as the term suggests, the nominee has no veritable interest. So as to enable the years on the main of a deceased nominee to what would that be? Now, coming to the speaker of the day, I need to tell you much about uh, Justice Sunil Thomas. In so far as I know, this is a judge here. You have a judge who has an extensive knowledge of laws, an incredibly erudite, an extremely dignified, gracious, and courteous judge, and off the bench with an impeccable integrity. And the finest part of Justice Sunil Thomas is that nobody would have ever seen Justice Sunil Thomas losing his school temper and smile. So, well, I don't want to stand in the way of the audience and the speaker anymore. So, over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the kind words that you have spoken about me. And Mr. Vidas also. Virtually, I should thank Mr. Vidas for giving me this opportunity. Secondly, the topic was suggested, in fact, by Mr. Vidas. He suggested, sir, why not we have a discussion on this topic? I know that probably it may appear to be very odd to say that is there any difference between legal heirs and legal representatives, but it has got its own significance. So I should thank uh, Mr. Vidas for suggesting this topic so that I could give an eye lecture on this. So what we are trying to discuss today is who is a legal representative, who is a legal heir, and who is a nominee? Are these terms interchangeable or are they three different concepts? Do they overlap or can a legal representative be a legal heir also or vice versa like that? So we'll try to discuss on this topic today. So if the, who is a legal heir? We'll start with that. Legal heir is, means in, in, under the law, a person who succeeds to the estate of the deceased. As you all know, the succession can be by two methods. It can be by, a law, by the application of law if he dies intestate. Or by the operation of his will if he has a testamentary death. So that a person who succeeds to the estate by the operation of law or by the operation of act of parties who has left behind a will, such persons are denoted as heirs or legal heirs because they acquire the right to the property by virtue of the law of succession or by the testamentary succession. And the legal heir acquires the entire right to the property to which he is entitled to as per the law of succession or as prescribed by the testator by, his, by the terms of in his will. So that legal heir means a person who ultimately succeeds to the estate of a person by the operation of law of succession in the case of a testamentary estate, not interstate succession, and in the case of a testamentary succession by the operation of this will. This is, the, this is how you generally define. If you go through the statutes, you will never find this exact word being defined in any of the statutes. You may find the definition of a heir, but the term legal heir is something which you frequently use. And in certain cases, I have seen as, as, uh, as spoken to by the, by the producer that uh, they are at times interchangeably used. So 
so i can tell you the legal heir means he is the person who acquires right title and interest over the property by virtue of the law of succession and law of succession may be different for each person depending on the personal laws or the other general law applicable to the parties if you go to the hindu succession act section 33 of the hindu succession act deals with the definition of a heir under the section 33 of the hindu succession act a heir is defined as a person male or female entitled to succeed to the estate of of a property of an interstate under the act indian succession act does not specifically define who what is meant by a legal heir it only says it only refers to the various persons who are entitled to succeed to the estate by the terms legal descendants spouse kindred etc as heirs under the muslim law of succession heirs are broadly divided as sharers or residuals so these are the broad, broad categories so you will have to unmute yourself I just hold on. Uh, you're not audible. You have muted yourself. Legal representative is a person. So you will have to repeat uh, last two sentences. Uh, you have missed it out. Is there any interruption, Mister? No, uh, you had muted yourself. So last two sentences, you would have to repeat it. No, it's fine. Is it okay? Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> And section two eleven of the CPC defines a legal representative. If you go through the definition, you will find that it has got three categories of persons. one is a person in law under under section 211 of the cpc legal representative is defined as a person who in law represents the estate so estate of a deceased the second category is a person who intermeddles with the estate of the deceased third situation refers to a case where a person is sued or sued against a sued or a sues or has sued against is sued against dies and the persons on whom the property devolves they also come under the definition of the legal representatives so virtually section 211 of cpc takes in three categories of person i will repeat by saying that the first categories are those a category is those persons who in law represents the estate of the deceased the second category is those person who intermeddle with the property estate of the deceased third is a case where one person who is sued or is sued against has sued or sued against dies and those persons on whom the estate of the property vests so these three categories come under the definition of legal representatives as provided under the cpc if you refer to this definition of legal representative i will tell you once again that the term used in the cpc is not legal heir but the legal representatives there is a pre reason for that you will come to know about why the term used is legal representative when you discuss order 22 
so the first thing that strikes your attention is that the definition is a very broad one and, and an inclusive one also. So when, when the first category of person, which includes those persons on whom the state devolves, takes in those persons who by virtue of law, either by a testamentary succession or by an interstate succession, become entitled to succeed to the state of the person as legal heirs. The definition does not stop the definition goes a bit further and says that it includes, it's an inclusive definition. It says that it includes those persons who intermeddle with the property. Now, this is a term which has created a slight confusion in the minds of people as if anybody who trespasses into the property is also a person who interprets with the property so that he has got some right over the property or he can be also be proved as a legal representative. You should not be under the impression that the term intermediates used in section in the definition clause conveys a negative meaning that anybody and everybody who trespasses into the property or into a rank trespasser will fall within the definition of a legal representative as defined under section 211 of the CPC. An interperson, intermediates means a person who has some element of right, either possessory in nature or in any other legal manner. So it does not convey a negative meaning. Then the third category relates to a case wherein a person who is who has died is either has sued or was sued against in the representative capacity all those persons on whom his estate devolves would fall within the definition of legal representative. So that's why I said that the definition of legal representative as provided under the CPC is broad, inclusive, and it takes in persons other than the legal heirs also. So that legal heirs includes all those persons who are legal heirs, who hold the property, who acquire the property, or who are entitled to succeed to the state of the property, and includes certain other categories of persons in certain situations. Now, this has this the scope of this section has been considered by the Supreme Court in one decision which I have referred to, that is in custodian of branches of Banco National Ultra Marino. Custodian of branches of Banco Na National Ultra Marino versus Nalini by Nakui. Nalini by Nakui. N A I Q U E. 1989 S 2 S C R 810. In that, the Supreme Court was called upon to consider the scope of the definition of a legal representative as defined under the CPC. Supreme Court held that. As I told you just now, the definition is a broad one. It is an inclusive one. It takes in a legal heir also. It includes legal heirs and also who, those persons who are entitled to succeed to the state, and not to succeed to the state, to represent the state, though he may not have acquired right, title, or possession by virtue of law of succession or interstate succession. That's why we say that the definition of legal representative is a broader one, wider one, and an inclusive one. This has been, uh, this uh, decision has been reiterated, or this proposition has been reiterated in other decisions also. I will give you two other decisions. One is in Chiranjit Lal. Chiranjit Lal versus Jasjit Singh. Chiranjit Lal. C-H-I-R-A-N-J-I-T-L-A-L. 
versus Jasjit Singh, J A S J I T, Jasjit Singh, 1993 to SCC 507. And the second decision is Suresh Kumar Benzal, Suresh Kumar Benzal versus Krishna Benzal, 2010 to SCC 162. In these decisions follow the same view and that is a consistent view also. In one case, that is an Andhra Bank Limited versus R. Srinivasan and others. Andhra Bank Limited versus R. Srinivasan and others. Citation is 1962 AR, AR 1962 AR SC. 232. The question came up as to whether a person who gets acquires a minor or a fractional share in the property be considered as a legal representative in relation to the whole property, entire estate of the property, entire estate of the deceased. Supreme Court said. Such a person will also fall within the definition of legal representative as defined under the CPC. That was a law laid down by the Supreme Court in Andhra Bank Limited versus R. Srinivasan and others. Now, there is one more def one more clause which refers to the term legal representative that is in relation, that is under section 50 of the CPC in relation to the legal representatives of a judgment debtor. Section 50 of the uh, CPC says that legal representative of a deceased judgment debtor means a person who can sue, can, who can sue, can be sued for the purpose of executing the decree. In other words, legal representative of a judgment debtor means a person against whom the decree can be proceeded. So this is the distinction between a legal heir and a legal representative. Then the question comes, are all legal heirs legal representatives and are, are all legal representatives legal heirs? So if we go back to the definition of the legal representative as provided under, under the CPC, what you will find is that the term legal representative includes legal heirs also. So what happens is that section, that is very clear from section 211 of the CPC. Section 211 says when it says that legal representatives include those persons who succeed to the state or who are a person's in law represents the state of the estate means it may it includes a legal heir also. It expands further. So that ultimately what we can conclude is that legal heirs can also be considered as legal representatives as are also legal heir representatives as defined under the CPC. Since it is a broader one, since the definition of legal representatives as provided under the CPC is of a broader nature, all legal representatives need not be legal heirs. That's the peculiar feature of it. So that the so that all legal representatives may not be the legal heirs, but all legal heirs are legal representatives also. This is the point as this point has been affirmed by the Supreme Court in I will refer to three decisions on that point. Varadarajan versus Kanagavandi and others. Varadarajan versus Kanagavandi and others. AR 2020 SC 740. AR 2020 SC 740. AR 2020 SC 740. And the other decision is which I referred to earlier. Suresh Kumar Bensal versus Krishna Bensal. Suresh Kumar Bensal, I referred to earlier. 
Suresh Kumar Bensal versus Krishna Bensal, 2010, 2 SCC 162. And the third decision is a slightly older decision. Jeladi Suguna, Jeladi, J A L A D I, Jeladi Suguna, S U G U N A, versus Satya Sai Central Trust. Jeladi Suguna versus Satya Sai Central Trust and others. 2008, 8 SCC 521. Now, in a slightly different context, this wide definition of legal representative came up before the Supreme Court recently in a different context. I'll tell you that that, that was a, a, a decision under the Motor Vehicles Act. The interesting question was, can a, can a mother-in-law who had been living or who has lived with the deceased can be considered as a legal representative under the Motor Vehicles Act. This decision is uh, in N. J. S. V. and others. N. J. S. V. and others versus Chola Mantalam M. S. General Insurance Company. N. J. S. V. and others versus Chola Mantalam M. S. General Insurance Company Limited. I could not get the citation as it, but I will give you the civil appeal number. Civil appeal 6451 of 2021. The Supreme Court held, this Abdul Nasir held, that the, though the scope of section 166D of the Motor Vehicles Act, which enables illegal representatives to be brought on record, does not specifically prescribe a mother-in-law. On a broader perspective, she can also be considered as a legal representative of the deceased for the purpose of representing in the proceeding and also for the while considering the question whether compensation is liable to be paid or not. So this is the broad distinction between or the difference between these two concepts of legal heirs and legal representatives. The most important provision which refers to the legal, legal representatives and the impact of legal representatives comes in civil suits. Order 22, Rule 3, 4 and 5 of the three provisions which provide for bringing on record the legal heirs of a deceased plaintiff or the deceased defendant. Section uh, rule of uh, order 22, rule 3 and 4 refers to how it has been, they can be uh, brought on record, who are the persons entitled to be brought on record, etc. Rule 5 says that whenever a question as to who should who is entitled to, uh, to be the legal representative arises, that court itself shall consider the question and decide whether the person who comes on record or is sought to be brought on record is entitled to represent the suit, represent the deceased. Now we'll consider what is the scope of Order 22, Rule 5. Order 22, Rule 5, the way which enables the court before, whom, uh, before which the matter is pending to decide whether a person who comes on record or proposed to come on record or is sought to be brought on record, is entitled to represent the state of the deceased and satisfies the definition under uh, section 211 of the CPC. That court itself can consider the question. That court itself can consider the question whether he is entitled to represent the state of the person and to continue the legal proceedings before the court. The first important aspect of that proceeding is that it is summary in nature. Summary in nature in the sense that no detailed inquiry is con conducted, but the court, con court makes a privacy inquiry. And if it is satisfied that the person who is sought to be brought on record 
is competent to such a, uh, represent the uh, represent the, the disease in the proceedings he can be permitted to be brought on record and continue the proceedings so that inquiry as contemplated under order 22 rule 5 is a summary proceeding then one question comes if one person that inquiry which uh, it concludes it a determination that this person is competent to represent the uh, represent the disease in the proceedings is it a conclusive determination on the question of legal heirs this was considered by the supreme court in jaladi subhanas case which i just now referred to in jaladi subhanas case the supreme court had was called upon to consider the question once a determination is done by the court on the question as to whether the person who is sought to be brought on record or to be recorded as the legal representative is entitled to proceed to continue with the suit is entitled to proceed with the suit will that amount to a determination of the question of legal heirship in jaladi subhanas case the court said it will not but it will be conclusive so far as that question whether he is entitled to continue the proceeding before that court but not the question whether on the question of legal heirs and the court also said when the as for as long as the court decides on the question whether this person is competent to proceed with the adjudication or till he is permitted to continue the proceeding bring out to be brought on record as a legal representative and permitted to continue with the proceedings he has no right to participate right for adjudication until such question is uh, question is decided and the determination of the court as to who is the who is uh, determination by the court as to who is the legal representative under order 22 rule 5 will be for the limited purpose of representation of the deceased person in that suit that is a scope of a inquiry under order 22 rule 5 the first thing i said it is a summary in nature second thing is that it is of a limited consequence and limited import and that decision permitting him is uh, for the whole purpose of the proceeding is only to represent the disease in the further stages of the suit this question came up before the uh, the scope of that came up before another uh, another decision that is before the rajasthan high court in kalu ram kalu ram versus charan singh ar 1994 rajasthan 31 AR 1994 Rajasthan 31 that was a case where the appellant died and kalu ram sought himself to be brought on record as a legal representative his claim was on the basis of a will executed by the deceased person there was an objection regarding his uh, right to continue as as a legal representative the ground was that there was suspicion regarding the execution of the will which was relied on by kalura the rajasthan high court said the question we are not going into the question of legality and correctness of the or the genuineness of the will we are only confining ourselves to the question whether he has he can be permitted to continue the proceedings at least on the strength of a will the courts permitted him to continue the proceeding as the legal representative of the deceased so that the settled proposition of law is that any determination on the question of legal representative under order 25 rule 5 will be for the limited purpose of deciding as the to the as the person 
who is entitled to represent the deceased in the proceeding. Nothing more. This is held considered by the Supreme Court in three other decisions. One, the two other, the two decisions which I already referred to. One is Mahant Satyanand. Mahant Satyanand. M A H A N T H Satyanand versus Shamlal Chauhan. 2018, 18 SCC. 2018, volume 18, SCC 485. As well as in Varadarajan's case, which I referred to earlier, and in Suresh Kumar Bensal's case, which I referred to. So uh, these three decisions consistently laid down the principle that the adjudication under Order 22 Rule 5 on the question of legal representative is only for the limited purpose of determining whether that person is competent to competent to continue with the proceedings. Nothing more than that. So it is summary in nature. It does not determine the question of uh, legal aids. Then the third question that will arise in such a, in a, in a decision on Order 22 Rule 5 is whether that decision will be and will act as, will operate as Adjudicator in relation to other proceedings. Because there is a decision by a court of law on the question whether he is entitled to, the, uh, to be the, uh, entitled to represent the estate. Will that determination operate as a adjudicator? This question was again considered by the Supreme Court in Suresh Kumar Bensal's case, which I referred to earlier. What the Supreme Court held was that it is a well settled principle. That a determination regarding the question of legal representative under Order 25 Rule 5 CPC will not operate as adjudicator in relation to any other further proceedings because the, this determination is only the sole purpose of deciding whether he is competent to continue with the legal proceedings. Only for that purpose. Whether his presence in the uh, proceeding will enable the proper adjudication of the dispute which is in the, involved in that list. Now, the, 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 this decision or this consistent view that decision rendered under Order 22 Rule 5 will not operate as a adjudicator has got its own valid reasons also. The first reasoning is that that question of legal representative is not the main issue involved in that suit. It is an incidental issue that has arisen consequent to the death of a party to the list. So that, and it, it so that the decision under Order 25 Rule, rule, rule 5 cannot operate as a get for the simple reason that there is no determination by the, by the court insofar as the issue involved between the parties is concerned. Secondly, the legal representative, because of the very basic principle of legal representative, the question of legal representative or a legal representative is appointed under Order 25 or 22 Rule 5 only for the purpose of further conduct of the litigation. And such a decision such a determination cannot take away forever and for all times to come the question on question by us to who is the legal heir. These are two different issues. By, resolve, by deciding the question as to whether the person who is taught sought to be brought on record as the legal representative of a deceased person will not preclude the legal aides, the genuine legal aides, from contesting the proceeding on the ground that they are the actual legal aides by virtue of the law of succession or on the strength of a will excluded by the deceased person. Third reasoning for that is that such a determination is 
granted by the court or arrived at by the court on the basis of a summary proceeding conducted, a summary inquiry conducted by the court. And there is no appeal against that. Necessarily, such a determination cannot operate as the judicator. Lastly, the concept of legal errors and legal representatives are totally different. So, a determination on the question of legal representative cannot operate as a adjudicator in so far as the question of legal error should be legal error should be concerned. So this is the reason why the Supreme Court have, the Supreme Court has consistently held that it will not operate as a adjudicator. Then one question as I said earlier will arise. Can a ranked trust person come forward and seek for an uh, to represent the state? He cannot. So broadly we can say the, le the legal representatives include the legal aids or any person or any person who is entitled to represent the estate of the deceased as executor, administrator or a nominee or a person authorized by the deceased to continue the proceedings. So such person also come within the persons also come within the definition of legal representatives. Now this aspect has been held by the Supreme Court in Varadar Rajan's case, which I referred to earlier, and another decision of the Supreme Court that is in Desharad Rao Kate, Desharad D A S H R A T H, Desharad Rao Kate. Versus Bridge Mohan Srivastava, 2010, 1 SCC 277. 2010, 1 SCC 277. So, Varadrajan's case, which I referred to earlier, the Sharad Rao Kate's case, and there is one more decision of the Punjab and Haryana High Court, which has considered this the question as to why, how, or what are the reasons why the determination of legal representative will not operate as the adjudicator. That decision is in Mohinder Kaur, Mohinder Kaur and another versus Piara Singh and others. AR 1981 Punjab and Haryana 130. <clears throat> now, one question that normally comes up is. Suppose some persons are permitted to represent the deceased in a legal proceeding by virtue of an order granted by Order 22 Rule 5. Will that be binding on other legal, other legal representatives who are not brought on record? Or assume a situation were it. One legal representative is permitted to contest the proceedings. Will it bind the remaining legal representatives or legal, legal representatives who are not brought on record? It will. Subject to two conditions. I will give you that, I will take you directly to that decision. That's in Dayaram and others. Dayaram, D A Y A, Dayaram and others. Versus Shyam Sundari, S H Y A M. Dayaram versus Shyam Sundari, A R nineteen sixty five S C one zero four nine. Dayaram and others versus Shyam Sundari, A R nineteen sixty five S C one zero four nine. What the Supreme Court held was that. 
if after a bona fide inquiry the court permits one or more persons to be brought on record as the legal representatives that will bind all other legal representatives provided there was no collusion or fraud so that a decision rendered by the by the by the court and the invoking order 25 rule 5 permitting one or more legal representatives to be brought on record the decision rendered will bind ultimately all other legal representatives notwithstanding the fact that they have not been brought on record provided the court has conducted a bona fide inquiry and satisfied itself that these are competent persons entitled uh, who can be permitted to continue the proceedings and there is no fraud or collusion so virtually that means a decision rendered by the court on this question can be challenged by the other legal representatives who are genuinely affected on the ground that either the court did not conduct a proper inquiry bona fide inquiry Uh, made a proper inquiry, or that there was fraud and collusion between the parties, either the legal representatives who are come on record and the other other side, or in between them intercept so as to defeat the interests of persons who are not brought on record. Still, a challenge is possible, but on, on the other hand, if they are brought on record bona after bona fide inquiry. then there it is that is that decision is biting on legal representatives who are even not brought on by law this has also again been considered by the supreme court in one more decision in k mohammed suleiman in k mohammed suleiman versus mohammed ismail ar 1966 sc 792 AR 1966 SC 792. So these are the broad distinctive features of legal heirs and legal representatives. Now we come to the question of nominee. Who is a nominee? Nominee is a person. the concept of nominee is a totally different concept nominee is a person who is nominated by the deceased to act on his behalf after his death to that extent the nominee can also be a legal representative suppose the nominee is appointed for the limited purpose of doing something on his behalf that nominee gets acquires right to the property he does not acquire the right to the property he gets the property and holds it in trust for the other legal uh, on behalf of the other legal heirs so nominee is a person who is voluntarily nominated by a person to receive or administer to receive or administer the property upon his demise he does not acquire any right to the property any interest over the property and his position is only that of a trustee so the broad distinction between a nominee and a legal a legal heir is that nominee is a person who is always voluntarily nominated by the deceased to receive or administer a property mobile or immobile after his demise on the other hand legal heir is a person who acquires the right to the property where of consequent to the demise of the deceased on the strength of law of succession or on the strength of a will executed by him the second distinction between nominee and legal heir is that nominee enjoys the property of the deceased person in the capacity as a trustee whereas a legal heir 
may acquire right, title, and interest over the property, including possession. So these are the broad distinctions. Now, what is the ultimate conclusion when we analyze all these three concepts? They cannot, we can strictly say that the term legal heir, legal representative, and nominee, these three are three different concepts. I can already also tell you a broad, on a broader angle, we can say legal heir, legal heir and legal representatives. They, the right can be created in their favor by either by operation of law or by act of parties. Say, for example, if, if a person dies in the state, by operation of law, is legal, legal, the, the persons who succeed to his estate, we call them the legal heirs. Voluntarily, when he executes the will, the right can devolves upon them. So it can be a legal heirship can be created either by act of parties or operation of law. Legal representative is also identical. It can be created, legal heirship can the right can be conferred either by act of parties or by act, operation of law. Whereas nominee can be created, nomination can be created only by the act of parties. This is another broad distinction. But I can tell you one more thing that the concept of legal, uh, legal representative may take in, in appropriate cases, a legal heir as well as a nominee. A nominee can also be a legal representative. A legal heir will also fall within the definition of legal representative. This is a broad distinction. And they are, these three are broad different concepts. Though, it may overlap. Other ingredients may overlap. One person can be, a deceased can nominate a person, can give a property to one or two is legal heir by virtue of a will and nominate him to perform some other act in relation to another property. So that's why I say, I, we say so that these words are not to be interchangeably used. There are three different concepts. In certain cases, nominee and the legal aids may come fall within the definition of legal representative. This is the broad conclusion that we are arriving at. So thank you once again for giving me an opportunity. Any doubts on these topics, we, a topic that we have discussed? Mr. Vidas? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, we have Sham also with us. I will ask Sham. Yes. Sham, ah. Sham Petman has also. I will just check it because on the group. Nobody has asked something. Anybody, anybody who can raise it? any question? Uh, no, I think you have so elucidatedly explained that nobody has posted a question. It was a, uh, I've just received the message, excellent session on the group as well as on the WhatsApp. So uh, thank you, sir, for sharing your knowledge. And we will request you to share the judgments. We will share it on the group. The judgments which you have uh, mentioned, we will share it on the group. So the judgments which you have shared, yeah, one says, uh, yeah, everybody is saying thank you. So uh, thank you, thank you, sir, for sharing the knowledge. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you.